Hello, 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 hello everybody, uh, Gaz Williams here and welcome to my show. Uh, I'm afraid no guest this week. Uh, that was a decision that I made based on some, well, some personal reasons mostly, but also, uh, yeah, I think I wanted to do a bit of catch up because the guests have been, well, I mean, awesome. I mean, we had Paul Hartnell on last week, Orbital, wow, and I have to say, some of the guests coming up is going to blow your minds. I cannot wait to i'm going to keep them quite secret i think until just before just to keep you guessing but uh yes some good some really good guests coming however tonight i'm afraid you're just going to be stuck with with me so um yeah hello everyone oh and i'm going to look in the chat room i have the chat room here that i can peruse easily these days and uh i see your head hello uh, Rick Alpin, hello, cheap card company, inverted popes, this is nice, um, Marius, uh, Steve Elbows, Ben Jarvis, lovely, lovely, nice to see good friends there in the audience, thank you for tuning in, this is going to be, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half long, I'm not sure, we'll just go, we'll just roll with things and see how we go, there's quite a few things I want to kind of cover tonight, so in front of me, as quite often has been the case in recent episodes is my the current state of my rack and yes it is full well I say full three HP so three HP left there I know there are two HP modules I wonder are there any three HP modules hmm there's a there's a there's a challenge um but yes it is full it is full so um wow what is it full of well we'll have a little look at the moment but um I'm sure many of you will have noticed, though, in the rack is the rather splendid Moog subharmonicon taking up rather a lot of the space. So I am thinking that's going to be coming out pretty soon. In fact, it's going to have to come out because there's something coming this week that is, uh, <laughs> it has to go in there. But the great thing about the subharmonicon is that it does exist as, as a standalone thing. And yes, you know, I... I'm going to be putting that into my bigger MIDI rig. MIDI, MIDI did, MIDI did, MIDI, <laughs> MIDI rig. Yes, and the MIDI rig that is over there is going to be the feature of some up and coming shows later on. Where uh, once I've actually put it all together again, so don't hold your breath on that one. It might take a while. Um, Erica Synth's Pico series are three HP. Thank you, Marius. That's interesting because that's a. Uh, I haven't got any Erica Synth stuff yet. Um, uh, okay, I gotta say I love having you guys there and uh, in the room there. It is so nice. So um, I highly appreciate that. Feel very honoured to have your company. Yes. So the rack. What is new? Well, the main new arrivals really are the DPW design Moog, which is a distortion. I wonder if I can zoom in a little bit. Let's try and take the camera in. Hey, look at this, guys. This is a new thing for the show. Live focus. Live focusing. I'm absolutely hopeless at it. Anyway, here we go. Let's get that in tighter. You're right, yeah, we can see there at the top right hand corner. Oh. Wah -wah. Stop it vibrating. <laughs> yeah, so here is the Murg. Now Murg is a Swedish word for trash. And it is a distortion. Now, this isn't just a normal distortion. This is a distortion that I have had a personal history with before. Why is that? Because I have the pedal board. I have the pedal one and it's on my pedal board. And I have gigged with it. I've done some huge gigs with it. I have put it through its paces and it truly is quite a remarkable beast. It's unusual because it's set four separate amplifier circuits really and that, that are band passed uh, with a low a low mid a high mid and a high and they are um here on these knobs here so the pedal version is actually simpler basically the pedal version's just got a volume control and these four but the the eurorack module now brings in a uh, gain control now, I'd love to see this in the pedal one. That would be great, because you can get some very nice, super fat, clean sounds, but it's always breaking up a little bit, so it'd be nice to reduce the amount of gain. But thankfully, you, you can on this. Now, you may notice some of you who've been following me from the beginning of this Eurorack adventure, my first module has had to come out. Now, partly the reason why that's come out, I mean, I want it to go back in, and I'm sure it will once, uh, once this big chap is... Uh, slung its hook is that um that uh is an audio input 
for my bass guitar. Uh, but the Merg, thankfully, has one built into it now, so that's super cool. So I've been plugging into that and having... Um, having plenty of joy but what i'll do today though is i will plug the um i'll just plug the mini brute through it and then that's quite a simple way of uh in fact let's just plug that in now uh so you'll be able to hear that now but that's not the only delight from dpw because next door to it we also have a limiter module and that has got three separate limiters that can all be addressed in three inputs here um and these are soft knee, but like I think eight stage limiters. And uh, haven't played with it too much, but what I've played with so far is it's a lot of joy because you can also go in, out, in, out, in, <laughs> and just put limiter onto the limiter onto limiter, which is super cool. And then the final one from uh, DPW is the AV1, which is an attenuverter. Now, you know you have arrived in Eurorack world when you are even using words like that. Now, finding a use for it, that's another thats another thing. Um, but it is super cool because what this can do is you can have like a sort of a, a, ne a positive or a negative uh, input signal that you can either sum together or take a greater than. Now, that has got some very interesting and uh hmm this is the sort of eurorack sort of stuff which i think i was afraid of but i need to embrace <laughs> just going to catch up a little bit with what's being said hello everybody who's watching the show uh just having a little catch up with everyone oh excuse my arm oh hmm uh, uh, layout layout error i have i can see an error in my ways oh yes and here is another new arrival and uh this follows a tweet where I was wondering what Eurorack heads do when they've got to unscrew everything. Because when I was putting these things in, I realised I had to take everything out uh, in order to shuff shuffle everything along. But anyway, the overwhelming, the overwhelming uh, kind of shout out was for Nerlies from uh, Bifaco, which are, I'm sure, many of you will know. But if you haven't seen these, they are screws that are that, that have got thumb thumbable controls uh <laughs> you're just something like that so you don't need a tool uh to uh unscrew your modules so that's pretty cool um oh excuse me uh so they called yeah they're called um nerlies <laughs> right yeah so that's cool. So there's been a lot of shifting stuff around a little bit. And let's hear this then. So I'm going to get sound up through here. Ooh, what's going on? Just, just, just get a straight... Oh, hang on. There we go. I'll just do a straight sound here. Okay, the distortion is off. Filter is fully open. Let's just put a se simple sequence in. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
about that, I mean, it's really cool, isn't it? I mean, in terms of tone shaping, the tone shaping on it is super strong. Whoa. <laughs> I think some of my voice is getting in there somehow. Um, yeah, so there, that's the, the Merg. <laughs> uh, are you guys hearing that? Did that sound all right? Um, uh, did that sound okay? Just, just, just checking, just making sure the sound's all right, because this kind of stuff is, it, I don't know. I don't know how well it translates onto, your, onto, a, onto YouTube. Okay, right. So, as I say, that is a, a distortion, but a distortion with a difference. And I think is now going to be my default way in with my bass guitar as well. So let's let is let's actually plug in. Uh, no, I won't plug in because I've got too many things to grab. So I'll leave that for the moment. Um, okay, bit loud. <laughs> Do you know what? It is loud though. That is the thing. It is when you plug into that thing. This, uh, I get it off my pe off my pedal as well. When you kick it in, it, there's a kind of clarity and a powerful loud sound to it uh, <laughs> so yeah very exciting right anyway away from your rack for a moment and i would like to take you on a little personal uh, odyssey of mine if you will and this a little bit of indulgence on my part really but i mean i hope you can understand the reason for that so uh last week was the funeral of my of my mother um last thursday uh and uh that's oh unbelievably difficult i'm really struggling with it it's horrible and anyone who kn knew my mum will understand she was such an incredible person as is everybody's mums and i'm sure lots of you will have also been or have gone through some sad times it's uh you know it's a whew, you know it's heavy and so it should be i mean your mother is, i mean good grief but my mum was she was an amazing person, you know. She got involved with computers in the mid-'80s, realising how you could use them to sort of make education for, for children just so much better. It was a very innovative piece of software that she was involved in that had a wide uptake at the time. I mean, this is early, early days of computing, but um, my mother and father both lost to cancer now. It's horrible. But both were innovators and educators and people who really tried to make the world a better place. I am so thankful for them, really. You know, it's, uh, well, <laughs> as we all should be for our parents. I mean, come on. But uh, anyway, I don't want to dwell too long on this because that is heavy. But I want to see, I mean, I've been trying to turn things around a little bit and trying to focus on things. And one of the things that has come back to me really is... Uh, my early love of the rock, the Canadian rock band Rush. And if you will allow me just to talk about this a moment, because I think through it, I've found something that's been giving me a, I don't know, a bit of, um, a bit of strength and a bit of positive focus. And that, so I started playing bass around the age of 15 and I bought an album that, was a Rush album and it was called Hold Your Fire. I'm going to make a video about this album because it means a lot to me. Um, and it was a sort of a synth pop era of the band Rush, but that was my first way in and into discovering Geddy Lee, the front man who also was the bass player, and subsequently just became really obsessed with them. I was learning to play bass and a lot of the bass on the... I don't know, the indie stuff and the stuff that was around at the time just didn't seem interesting enough interesting enough to me. And Geddy Lee's incredibly creative bass playing and uh, thrilling bass playing. He really, truly is amazing. Uh, I just... Um, I started to reconnect with them. I, I had started to reconnect with them um, following the death of their drummer, Neil Peart, who also died of cancer, sadly. Uh... That got me back listening to them. I had dipped my toe in along the way, but not in the way that's just happened in the last few months because I've just been quite obsessed about it, just like I was when I was 16. 
you know, listening mostly only to them and just being uh, immersed in it, really. And But especially Geddy Lee. And Geddy Lee, I think, is this rock star who didn't let us down. He has aged so wonderfully. And when you watch interviews with him, he's such a brilliant person. And it's amazing. I feel like I backed the right guy all along, even though, to my eternal shame, I actually gave away a lot of my Rush albums uh, in the mid-90s. I'd, I'd, I'd become a, a little bit ashamed of that period. And, you know, anyway, that was um, that clearly was a bit of a mistake. But, you know, you do that sort of thing, don't you, in your 20s. You reject, you know, you rebel a little bit against your teens. However, yeah. Anyway, so talking about Geddy Lee, Geddy Lee had, since the band had retired gracefully uh, a few years ago. Now, when they decided to do that, the reasons were a lot to do with the music of Rush was just getting too difficult to play it properly. And Neil Peart, the drummer, was such a perfectionist. He was the lyricist as well, but that's another story. But such a perfectionist. When he started to realise he couldn't keep it up anymore, quit while you're ahead and they've done it they did it in a very graceful way and I think it was after that that he got ill I don't think they quit because he he, he was ill I think that was a, a sad uh, just a, a, a sad way things had developed Neil Peart you see had gone through enormous tragedy himself um, God, I don't want this to be a downer show at all but it'll come up to the good stuff but Neil had lost his uh, only child and his daughter in a car accident and then his wife died of cancer about 10 months later terrible tragedy that just you know where his family was wiped out and uh, and I think therein is something with Rush is that the lyrics and the philosophy because well the, as I say Neil was the drummer who was also the the, the songwriter and uh, the lyricist was kind of every man Everyone could kind of understand it. Very philosophical lyrics, but not really too difficult to uh, to to comprehend. And I think, you know, the critics hated them. They absolutely hated them. And critics don't like things which are spelt out a bit too obviously. And I don't necessarily think that is the case with Rush, but I think uh, it, the, the, the philosophical nature of their lyrics was 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 presented in a way that was very accessible to people and the fact you know this incredible statistics about rush i think they still the third they've got the third most gold records in america after the beatles and the rolling stones so you know they're a huge you know huge act over all the years anyway so i mentioned that because i have treated myself to a couple of things that are rush related and i wanted to share them a little bit with you guys and then we will get back to other stuff i promise but so the first one is a box set in a book of Blu-ray concerts of them the last of the last twenty years really, and this last twenty years I haven't really paid a huge deal uh, of attention to them. So, uh, but it's re it's really nice. It's uh, whoop. <laughs> all a photo. It's got a big, you know, book of photos and Blu-rays, and I've been enjoying watching them. And Neil Peart did a drum solo. Now this does sound a bit nutty, um, <laughs> but um, oops, let's go back there. Uh, he finished the drum solo. I I burst into applause with the crowd. I'm I'm clapping him at home. I'd never done that before. Have any of you ever done that before? Just actually burst into applause at home. <laughs> Maybe watching a sports thing, perhaps. But yeah. Um, ah. <laughs> uh, Yes. Nice one, Wagyu. It's nice. Uh, Geddy's parents expected him to go to college, but he went off on a national tour with the band. Yeah. Oh, Geddy never let us down. He's never been an arsehole. He's always the, he's a good guy. He's a... Uh, Geddy Lee. So, speaking of Geddy Lee, so the band retired. Rush decided to retire. Geddy Lee wondered what to do next. Well, he looked around at his beautiful bass collection and decided to write a book. <laughs> and not just a normal book. Oh my God, so heavy. Ah, look at this. Geddy Lee's. Big, beautiful book of bass. <laughs> oh, it's heavy, it's heavy. It's like, uh, oh, 
a weighty tome. My my goodness. It's almost like got like a you know starless and Bible black vibe about it. Um it's nice and it's all embossed as well. <laughs> what a book. I mean, I am a bass fanatic. I am a synthesizer fanatic too, but I am a uh yeah, bass bass guitar fanatic. And this book is um Getty's kind of collection of vintage basses, which is uh um, it, it's all kind of um chronicled in beautiful big uh, photographs. <laughs> it is bass porn, basically, but uh, I'm determined to be a good boy with this and keep it pristine. And I am also quite inspired by reading it as well because there's a big chunk about Fender, and essentially it's 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 Fender's history told in in basses and Gibson and Rickenbacker, and then there's basses from all over the world, and then there is Geddes touring equipment as well and I am not looking ahead at all I am going page by page reading it and just going through it and I'm so tempted to skip ahead but I am being good and I am going I'm going through it bit by bit but in terms of a book of joy and something that I want something to take my mind off the grief and all the business that I've been going through this book and those concerts and Rush are just sort of you know thank you Rush it's been really, really, really helpful for me. So I just wanted to share that little story with you because, yeah, music. I said it before. Frank Zappa said it first. Music is the best. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, how are we doing for time? All right. Oh, yeah, nice, nice, nice. God, it's a bit different not having a guest now. I'm just going to... Um... Right, so I'll come back to... what have I? What else did I want to talk about? Uh, um, I kind of thought I was going to talk about that for a lot longer. <laughs> okay, let's come back to the rack. So, actually, let's do that. Um, it's full. It is full. The 3 HP, which I am going to be looking at Erica since stuff. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, full, virtually full. So, what have I been doing with it? Well, let's... Again, just before the show, before I started broadcasting, I just pulled all the cables out. I just figure that if you're looking at a load of cables, you can't see what's going on. But if we do it slowly and just patch as we go, then hopefully it will make a bit more sense. So at the moment, I've got the, the output of the Mini Brute going in to the Moog, <laughs> and the output is just patched straight into the Rosie, which is my output module. Right, but... What we'll do is, um, I'm going to put it into the limiter. Okay, so this limiter is, uh, uh, and then I'll keep it simple. I'll just come back out and go back into the rosy. We'll just do one level of the limiter. But um, it is quite fun because a limiter doesn't sound like necessarily the most interesting of, uh, of modules, but you can do some pretty cool things. Uh, okay, it's quite hot. Am I quiet on my voice? Maybe I put my voice up. Um, uh, yeah, maybe. I'm sorry about that. Maybe that's better. Louder voice. Is that better blend? Yes, I think maybe. Okay. <laughs> right, so limiter. Let's see what it does. So I'm going to keep the Moog off for the moment. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, so I'm just going to just move through the limiter and just see what it does to the tone. That's just a... Sawtooth, so let's bring in. Come on, I'm going to set up, I'm going to cascade all three limiters. 
it's doing something quite nice. It's definitely doing something quite nice. Yeah, bringing out the harmonics. Yes, it is. It's kind of doing like an interesting distortion, isn't it? So I'm gonna I'm gonna just cascade them out of one into two, out of two, into three. Yeah, let's squish this some. Okay. Let's bring that back up. spots in there. Hang on, I can hear my voice. It sounds like my voice is somehow going into the... I don't know, something seems to be picking up my voice. <laughs> oh, what's going on? So I suppose I'm using this limiter like a wave shaper, really, aren't I? I need an oscilloscope. That's what I need. It's a super useful thing. I want... I want an oscilloscope! I want one now! Yes, I think I can get one on my iPhone, but I think that would be really helpful to see what's going on. Because... Uh, the limiter is really is totally changing the, the wave shape, but there was some juicy, lovely, thick tones as I'm finding it within there. Ah, so um, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Just three limiters in a, in a line and then just adjusting them. Now, sadly, we can't modulate them, but I think that's probably all right. But this limiter can, it's, I've got it set on AC at the moment, but it can also limit DC. And I think that... Uh, it's just better suited if it's an audio signal going through AC. So I guess, hmm, right, that's where I would get a bit scared now. So putting a CV signal through the limiter makes sense, though, doesn't it? Limiting a CV signal, hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is where I need my chat room <laughs> to help me out. Um, get a data, what is a data? Is that a module? Yes, it is, Mordax data. Okay, okay, interesting. Oh, there is something winging its way over here. It's taken a long time, and it's not here yet, but it looks fabulous. I'm going to keep secret about it because I want to keep you guessing, but all I will say is it, it can be a filter, it can be an oscillator, it can be um, a modulator. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but it looks awesome. It also looks a bit scary and way beyond my own kind of uh, potchy levels. But that's the good thing about this. As I say, I'm finding just really simple little things, just even the difference on the limiter to be quite interesting. Uh, I've always favoured analog synth sounds being just really fat and thick and sort of mostly the melodies. Like Tom Sawyer on... Uh, by Rush, you know, people, 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 you know, sort of. Uh, I love the sound of rock band and analog synth. It's a good sound. It's such a good sound. I'm still a bit stuck in the 70s. Uh, you know, but bass guitar and a drum kit and an analog synth, no guitar, is a, such a cool sound. Or, you know, a guitar, no bass guitar, mm -mm. but with a synthesizer, it's... Oh, the, the mini Moog, always really brilliant in like a three-piece sound. Um, anyway, I digress. I love thick, simple sounds, so um, I suppose I'm a bit thick and simple too, so it does make sense. <laughs> right, let's get interesting. So... As we've seen before, we've met this one before, the Sea Devils filter. The, that's, this is the suit and tie guy filter that is 
based on a VCS, uh, an EMS filter. Not, I don't think it is the VCS3 now. I think it's from another one of his. But it is an 18 decibel diode filter. So we'll go into that instead. We'll go signal input. Oh, I tell you what, I've been having fun with this thing. <laughs> and we'll come out of that and then go into the rosy. Let's plug it in like so. So now... <laughs> Right, but your Merg is not switched on, so I'm going to bring this distortion in now. Okay. Right, this is going to get fun now. This is where things get good. Um... <laughs> Uh, just catching up in the comments. Again, thank you so much for people, uh, to everyone who joins in live on the show. It really makes me very happy to see you there. And it's uh, a joy that you choose to spend your time with me uh, and, uh, uh, and an honour too, especially as I'm making a load of nonsense here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so actually... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut to the chase a little bit here, though. I'm going to put it... I'm going to take the output of the Sea Devils. I'm going to plug it back. I'm going to plug it into my little stereo mixer. I'm going to come out in stereo of that mixer and into the Radical. So this, rad this Radical, I've, you know, I've talked about this one quite a bit, but it is a brilliant effects unit, but you do have to be quite... It, it, there's uh, some gotchas with it, uh, and it's cool, but you just have to be... Um, just have to be mindful with it. It's a lot to do with the shift control. If you press a shift control and not turn something and change your mind and just release, it can kind of it can kind of lose what you've just been working on. But it's all right because it kind of forces you to be um, it forces you to be careful with it, and 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 that's no bad thing. I, Op one is a bit like that. It kind of. Uh, it doesn't allow you to have any... It, like if you're working on the little tape recorder or you make some mistake and there's no undo, and you can really mess stuff up. Uh, so you have to be super careful. Uh, I don't know. It's, we're so used to, you know, infinity undo. <laughs> it's the norm, isn't it, to be able to undo, to be able to repair a mistake. So taking away the safety of the of that. Ah, now I'm wiring stuff in here, and you've probably been watching me go. Don't do it that way. I'm still kind of a little bit uncertain. A way out from being just getting in the way. In fact, that was one of the things that was pulling me off Eurorack more than anything else was just the cables. And um, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So. We've now got, or we should have, let's just get the thing working. Yeah, great. So, our signal path then is the the Arturia Mini Brute 2 into the Merg, into the limiter, into the Sea Devils filter, into the Radical, and then into the Rosie. Oh, I missed, the, yeah, sorry, the dope for, did I say that? Anyway, listen to that background noise. Ah, distortion, of course. Well, let's see what that dis let's actually see what that noise is doing. Okay, not not a lot of interest. <laughs> okay, let's get back. Let's right. I'm going to come up with a nice arpeggiated pattern. Let's do something. Oh. Let's get some. Let's... Mini Brute 
into the amount input. simple as possible from the mini brute so it's just a sawtooth okay. I'm taking the distortion out for a moment okay, more needs more I need to hear Okay. Bring this filter back in there. Oh, we need delay, don't we? That's why I plugged this in. Okay. Oh, you see, now this is where we want to go with things, isn't it? Time. So at the moment the clock is coming from the mini brute. So I'm going to send the clock from the mini brute into the radical, I think. So we'll go sequence to sync into the speed input. And I think I have to go hold shift and speed. Nice.
Yeah. It's cool, isn't it? I mean, that's just using the single oscillator of the Mini Brute. And, uh, <laughs> oh, but effects, so hey, effects. But loads of fun. I love the Merg. Um, the limiter, I think I'm not using it really to its best there, but it's still pretty cool. But the Merg is really cool. I love the way you can shape sound so drastically with it. I think it sounds beautiful. And um, the Radical on the end there, of course. You know, big props there to Jörg Schaff. What a kind, lovely gentleman he is. And... Uh, He's got a new band to watch out for now, the Royal Space Bitches. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, Jörg is a brilliant designer. He's been involved in so many amazing and very sophisticated pieces of equipment over the years. Radical technologies, you know, they make the, the Delta Sepe, which is rackable, but also can work standalone. Very nice. Uh, but oh, I can hear something in the background still. <laughs> There we go. Um, and But before that, he was working with uh, on, on a lot of the kind of classic quasi-midi stuff from the 90s. Now, that stuff was, uh, it was quite rare. You didn't see it around very much. Um, and uh, I don't know, I always was really interested in it. And then some of the radical stuff like the, uh, the, the Spectralis it's like a groove box and with quite a lot of sophistication. Um, so, yeah, so Jörg's been involved in some very sophisticated ideas. And this module, this thing here, it really is full of explorable delights. I have mentioned it before, so I'm conscious I'm repeating myself, but this the way that you can morph between effects is uh, it's just a... It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> um, right, how are we doing for time? I don't want to be too boring because it's just me. No guests today. If you're hanging in for guests, no guests, I'm afraid. I just, as I say, I, uh, I wasn't sure, but I have got brilliant guests lined up, so that is still going to be the main format of the show. Um, but, yeah, I kind of love sharing this little journey with everybody because um, I've been around since, since the late 80s. Uh, so I'm not a newcomer to synths, but patching is something that I've just really kind of avoided quite a lot. Um, well, I say that, but my MIDI studio is all patches, lots of things, but it's MIDI cables and audio rather than um, patching out uh, CV. Oh, of course. I forgot. This is something I was going to do, but I will have to do this again. Um, well... Do I? Could I set it up now? Uh, it just occurred to me the other day. It's like, of course. <laughs> this Touche, which I've been using exclusively with the computer for the last year now, um, has four CV outputs on there. <laughs> that is very interesting. So that, I, I won't do it today. But that's what I'll be doing in a very, in a very few, in a very near, oh, can't speak, very soon. I will make a little video where I plug this beautiful thing in to the, to the rack and see what we can do and explore some of that functionality. I've used it quite a bit with um, my Dreadbox Erebus and it is a glorious thing, a glorious thing, a glorious thing indeed. I have currently got the pinky salmon default capsule in there. I'm looking around furiously. Hang on. Yes, I can see it. Yo. Oh. This is when I break stuff. Not this time, thankfully. <laughs> so when you take that wooden skin off of the Touche, I'm sure you've all played around with these by now, but if you haven't, they really are a design classic. But um, when you take off this wooden skin, you can get different wooden skins now with different feelings. Uh, so this is a, a got maybe a bit more resistance. I think there's ones which are kind of which are maybe a bit slippier to the touch. But anyway, inside of there is a little silicon capsule. This is the default one, but they sell uh, additional ones. And the reason for that, I mean. 
I should really have it all plugged in to show you this, but this is a preview. This is a preview of something that is an upcoming something. Okay. And there's a white and there's a black one. So the white one is um, very, very soft. So when you've got that one in, let's put the skin back on the top of it, then it's really, it's much softer to the touch, a lot less resistance. And that is really nice with their software. That, they make this software that's um, called uh, Lie, uh, sorry, not Lie, it's called Arche. And it's a, a solo violin, a solo viola, and a solo cello. Uh, is it bass? No. Um, but with this softer capsule, it's easier to do the bowing. So you bow, this is your bow. This becomes your bow. So that lighter capsule just makes it a little bit more, I don't know, makes it easier to, to get the bowing. Or certainly in my, in my experience, this control is a sensitivity control. So you can make it really sensitive. And then this control here is an interesting one because this one limits how much left to right motion is there. So if you take it there, this hat, this it's really stiff to move it left and right. Move it down, you can. What a brilliant thing! There will be. I will be looking at that with my Eurorack in the next. Uh, yes, definitely. I'll promise you there. I'll do it in the next. In my next. Uh, in my next look at this stuff. I was teasing you there with all those different silicon rubber things. <laughs> um, how are we doing for time? Okay. Uh, You'll have to excuse me, people. I'm going to have a little sip of this not beer beer. Hold Your Fire was my first Rush album. Ah, oh, yeah. Hold Your Fire. So I'm going to make a video about Hold Your Fire, the Rush album from 1987, because it generally finishes at the bottom of the polls when people talk about worst Rush albums to best at Rush albums, of which I've discovered on YouTube. There are loads of them. Uh, I'm almost tempted to do one, <laughs> but I'm just going to do, I think, a one about that album in particular. And I think it should be kind of an interesting one to uh, synth lovers as well, because the synth sounds on that album are so prominent. And this is one of the reasons why that album is uh, despised so much, because it's really the furthest away from a, 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 a guitar rock band, really. I think that they ever strayed. Um, and then albums after that one, moved away from the synths back until they became like a really heavy rock band, probably heavier than they ever were in the later parts. Um, however, that Hold Your Fire is their poppiest album. The one before it was quite poppy too. And that word poppy is a bit horrible in a way because it sort of sounds like it's a demeaning term. But I think it's uh, just like accessible, cool music with lots of interesting philosophical lyrics. Where is this... There's some mad noises coming out of this thing. Oh, let me just keep that off for the moment. <laughs> um, yes, so I, I digress. That, that will be coming soon. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go on for too long, too much longer. You will be glad to know. Uh, but I think I'll do another jam. But I think I might unpatch some stuff and then repatch so I can explain what's going on. Um, hope you're all good out there and thank you so much for sticking around. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking through the messages. It's so nice to see you all in there. Really cool. Really cool. Really appreciate it. Uh, hmm. Okay. Right. So let's get back to where we were. So I've left the sub. I left the sub harmonic on out of the whole caboodle land. So. Maybe, maybe, in the spirit of fairness, we should do something with the subharmonic on. What a lovely thing it is. Okay, it's getting a bit dark now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> right. Okay, well, that's... That's the sound of our mini brute voice. So I guess our subharmonic on can work independently of that. Uh, I think I will send, though, the clock is coming. I'm going to 
Right, I'm going to pull the clock coming out of the Mini Brute to come out of the Subharmonicon instead. But I'm going to still sync the... Can I sync? Sync, sync, sync. Yes, clock in there. Okay, so now... Let's see now. Okay, so Subharmonicon is going to be... is. The, the, the uh, sequencer is going to be synced to the sequencer coming from the Mini Brute. So let's come out of the VCA and into another channel here. Okay. <laughs> this is where doing stuff live when you haven't thought about it before is always a little bit... No sub harmonic off. <laughs> Do a take like this. Now oh, let's try turning it up. <laughs> that usually helps. Patch that back in then. In, out. Still struggling getting the subharmonic on doing anything. Still quite nice, so. So the Merg is really doing a lot of. It's bringing the volume up there. Sorry, I realised it's a bit quiet, wasn't it? Here comes the subharmonicon. Whoa, look at this now. Oh, check this. Whoa, how evil is that? Losing control. Quick, dial everything down. Yeah. It's really atonal mush now, isn't it? Okay. Sorry, this is where your partners scream at you. Turn it off! Been a bit mean on the subharmonicon. The subharmonicon really needs to some real proper attention to get the. Let's get this. Let's just go into subharmonicon territory a moment now. Let's try and tame it. Tame the beast. Hmm. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Let's make life easier and I'll use one of the, the pitch quantizers for a moment. Hang on, it's going to be horrible for a moment. Bear with me. Something starts happening with this beauty though. Let's just put it in there.
uh, it's nice, isn't it? Uh, oh, you see, I'm going to be sad to take the subharmonicon out of the rack. I mean, I've, I've been thinking about mounting it on the top, but mm, I kind of want to keep this rack really portable. And uh, and in a way, the subharmonicon is so cool, it's making me lazy as well in terms of doing stuff outside of it. Um, but it's still a lot of fun. <laughs> I am just going to do my camera thing and I'm doing it in disguise. Yes, I'm not going to let that win. <laughs> Those who know what I'm talking about. <laughs> How are we doing for time? I think I'm going to be wrapping pretty soon. Hope you are enjoying the show so far. It's been, well, and is a continuing pleasure of mine to, to do this and to have you guys join. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so this journey, mm, I do feel like, again, I'm just, I am so dipping my toes in, but... I am really enjoying it. I think uh, anything that takes me away from being in front of a computer is something I've always strove for. The setup that I've got on the other end of the room there is all about that. It's very much about uh, an interactive space with no computer. There's a couple of iPads around that can assist, which are computers, but it's not based around a DAW, shall we say. It's based around just real things. I'm now actually thinking about um, a bigger sequencer <laughs> and uh, something like a Torrize Squid or something like that. I'm quite interested in. I think that's a bit underrated, the Squid. I think you really need to have a lot of cool hardware for something like that to be really cool. But I have, I have. So the Squid, something like that. Hmm. Um, you're in the same boat and have a similar setup. That is cool. Yeah, it is cool. I mean, I, I think I am a musician, you see, ultimately, and I want to make music as opposed to a sound designer, which, and there's absolutely no shame in being a sound designer and getting this kind of stuff just to make sounds. Uh, I Actually, yeah, you do have to reiterate that point that, you know, don't feel pressured into having to do anything you can have this gear with no pressure to do anything with. I mean, obviously, it's a good idea to make music and to do stuff, but don't feel pressured into it. If you just like sort of just, poo you know, mooching around with stuff, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. You know, there is no pressure to do stuff. Um, however, you know, doing stuff... <laughs> Whatever you do, if you do actually make a mix down, even if it's utter junk, it still is a thing. It's like a thing. And every thing that you make, you can just whack in a folder and then you can put that folder on an SD card and then put it into some, like a disting or something. You know, so every thing that you make is a potential, you know, it's a potential thing to do other stuff with and mould and manipulate. So... A lot of the time we get really hung up about stuff just not being absolutely perfect and then just delete it and not even make a little mix down of it. I'm super guilty of this. So, uh, and knowing that you can do all the stuff downstream, uh, manipulating uh, via, you know, like granular synths. My goodness, put, an in, put a pretty rubbish mix into a granular synth and it's a, it's a universe of new music. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of granular, I actually haven't used in this tonight, I haven't used the clouds module. And uh, I have to say, I know it is a real kind of almost a cliche, the clouds, to have a clouds in, in a rag. Uh, and, and that's no bad thing. Um, it, it is rather splendid, um, but uh, it isn't entirely scratching my granular itch. I think there are other granular um, modules out there that I need to investigate. Uh, it's good. It is good. And you can actually save some sounds into it as well. Just like short little snippets. I haven't done any of that yet. I think that would be pretty cool too. Um, but I'm still really longing for a disting EX. And a big reason for that is that I'd be able to just play polyphonic samples that I can create. 
say on the computer and then uh, bring into it. Uh, oh, and I just love chordal playing. So this is so monophonic. I'm trying to do chords by using delays and stuff, but uh, I want to have some sort of some sort of polyphonic aspect in here. And I think the disting, I think that's enough. Just really, really lovely samples because I think it's got a bunch of. Um, it's got a bunch of Spitfire audio samples pre-installed on the SD card that comes with it. Ah, uh, you know, God, those sounds could just be, you know, twisted and manipulated into all sorts of lovely, juicy stuff. So that's what I've definitely got on a bit of a gas for, is a disting EX. <laughs> Funny, really, isn't it? Ah... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I am going to be I am going to be logging off in a moment, um, but uh, I'll just chat for a little bit longer um, because I'm enjoying it, and there's a bunch of you out there, and there's a nice chat going on. Um, but yeah, some of the things that are going to be coming in the future, I think, are going to be uh, I'll be having to make sounds more. I'm st whole sounds. I'm still using you know, semi-modular synths, which is essentially all the envelopes and things are coming from that, as opposed to having, taking a oscillator and then driving it with uh, envelopes and doing it all. <laughs> I was still cheating a little bit. And the subharmonic on, I say it's cheating, but, you know, it's not getting down to the absolute nitty-gritty. It's, um, it's being... Uh, it's, it's kind of just dipping in a little bit. Saying that, this kind of setup, my goodness, I think is, you could go a million billion places with this. I don't need anything more. <laughs> need? Who said anything about need? This whole thing is all about want, isn't it? It's all... <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I am certainly enjoying it. I would like to say a big thanks to uh, Mr. Dan Walbeck from... DPW Design for um, furnishing this rack with these lovely things. Now, I haven't used the Attenuverter. Now, I'm going to keep that back, actually. The Attenuverter is something that I need to uh, I need to delve into and not be too afraid of <laughs> and find it doing stuff that I like musically. So that that's something. I might actually be tapping Dan up for a little bit more um, a little bit more insight onto that one. But to have the mug because the Moog is such a friend to me, having toured all over the place with one on my pedal board and it being just such a cool thing. To have it, it feels like having an old friend in here. So that's definitely going to be like, uh, that's going to be, that's, that's a well-earned place there. <laughs> oh man, it is interesting having a limited rack. I mean, everyone's going, oh yeah, you're going to need to get more, blah, blah, blah. And it probably will happen, you know. I'm enjoying it too much to want to sort of nip it in the bud. But I do also like the idea of trying to stay within this particular f frame uh, because of the portability of it and just keep in working on, uh, uh, like, pl trying to get good so once I finally can get out and play live, I can take it out and do some gigs. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I'm starting also to sort of realise how how to patch whilst playing and trying to work out ways of doing that. I know a lot of people, when they play live, they never do any pa actual patching. I think that is asking for trouble. But, um, yeah, I, hmm, it, is, it is interesting. But I actually love patching from scratch. So maybe... Do, do people do that? Do people play live and patch from scratch? Um... If I if you mix what I'm doing with Mind Place Casino, okay. I don't know what Mind Place Casino is. I will investigate that. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, singing. Thank you very much. That's a nice comment. But I I will be. Um, I I want to sing and and actually perform songs. Um, I am a songwriter. Really, I was thinking about this. I am a songwriter and. When I try and play with new things, ultimately it's to try to somehow make a song with it. I don't often get there with a lot of music technology things, but um, yeah, I want to be able to sing and play whole songs. I think uh, 
<laughs> Please say Moog again, guys. And more nasal sounding. Oh, sorry. Moog. 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 Swedish for trash, I think. But this thing isn't trash. This is this is sweet. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm waffling long enough now. So I think I will send. I will. I will. I'll sign off. But before I sign off, should I sign off with a jam or just say goodbye now? What up to you guys? Because I'm I'm easy either way. Um, because mm, mm, mm. uh, it's um, uh, I said it right. <laughs> Uh, Merk, Merk. <laughs> um, I just, uh, it's so cool to have you in the live room. It really makes a huge difference. It's, uh, it feels less precious, you know, when you're making a video and you're going to edit it, you get really harsh on, on you, you know, but when it's live and direct, then yeah, with a jam, of course. Okay. I'm going to finish off with a jam. Thank you, everybody, so much for uh, for tuning in. Um, as I said, apologies for no guests this week, but I decided to do that for personal reasons. And uh, But there will be guests next week, and the guests coming up, oh, I want to tell you who they are, but I am not going to, because um, I like it being a surprise. And I also don't exactly know which order things are going to happen in, but they will be along soon. Right. So, ooh, okay, we're going to start with a sub harmonic on, I think, and then build something with that. A little fine balance act. Wow. <laughs> Yikes. Whoa. Okay, this is a, getting a bit wrong. <laughs> I'll try and get this, I'll try and save this now.
Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, thanks so much, everybody. I'm going to tune out. I'm Gaz Williams. Um, yeah. Amazing. This is the Gaz Williams Show, and I'll be back next week, 8pm. Uh, please join me, and thanks, everyone, who has been here through this rather interesting and silly little trip. OK, bye.